and good evening guys a couple reasons we're starting this video right now you can see the sun is setting over there we'll wait for the camera to adjust and what you guys might have noticed in the last couple of videos, you'll see in the background here, um, everything here at the ranch is super green. We haven't had a ton of rain this year, but we've had enough for like the weeds and everything just to start growing like crazy. I mean, you can see the weeds are just about as tall as the fence there. So that is a problem. And this field has completely grown back in. It's beautiful, it's lush, but that's gonna become a problem come fire season. And well, in the middle of fire season, it's not the time to go brush cutting. It's now when things are still moist and we actually just had rain all last night. Now, the reason um, we're starting this video tonight is we're heading over to James's. We're gonna go check out his new zero turn lawnmower he got. And if you guys have been following the ranch for a minute, you probably saw the last time that field was cut. Um, and it's only been cut once since I've owned this place. Uh, Papa Rhino actually jumped in James's skid steer and ran the brush cutter up and down that field. It took him two days to do it. Now, I hit up James and I was like, hey man, can I rent your skid steer and your brush cutter? Because Papa Rhino has uh, graciously volunteered to brush cut the field again for me. Now, I don't enjoy being in skid steers for prolonged periods of time. They're great pieces of equipment. They're massively strong. They're immensely useful. But y'all know, I get motion sickness from most things. And being trapped inside of a skid steer all day long, just going back and forth, is enough to weirdly get me motion sick in this freaking Broncos yelling at me for not wearing a seatbelt right now. I get it. I get it. I get it. So I'm actually in the market for a big farm tractor and I'll, I'll talk more about that in a minute here, but we're just pulling up to James's. We got his zero turn lawnmower here. Look at this bad boy, huh? Pretty rad. 54 inch deck. Nice, dude. I'm glad it's got headlights because it's getting dark. <laughs> I know. Dude, when I brought it home, it was like this and I was like, eh, I have to use it. Of course it. you have to, I use, have to it. use it. So I started moving. I was like, oh, Got so James has been doing some bushwhacking over on his property with this thing and you're sold, right? I think so. Okay. If there's stuff that's like super wet and that's thick, it, you got to pass over it twice. But okay. Okay. That's pretty good. Now, when I talked to James about renting his skid steer, he did mention that there's no glass on this for Papa Rhino to break. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, don't jinx it because he'll find something else to break on it. How much does a blade kit cost for this thing? Don't worry. I already bought a spare. How much does a spare for the spare cost? Uh, I think it's like 60 bucks for the kit. Oh, that's not bad, that's okay. Not yeah, we better stock up on a few of those. Coming from a guy that decided from now on in my life, everything I have is gonna be enclosed cab. Where's the heater on this? It's getting cold out here. It's, it's definitely getting cold. <laughs> All right, well, give me the rundown of this thing. I mean, I know if you guys haven't watched James's channel, obviously he showed when he picked this thing up, but I'm new to the zero tone world. It's pretty idiot proof. I mean, it's just like old school skid steers. Okay. You bring these over. You don't really have to like, really counter if you like you want to turn right you just, or left i guess you just do one or the other really okay and then it'll just pivot on the rear wheel because it's not like it's got two wheels that are turning makes sense so right it's just the one okay how fast does it go uh, it can go pretty it, fast i think it does like four miles an hour okay yeah and then when you want to start mowing you just pull that up okay that's it and then well i guess the deck height you just push that down and you select however many inches you want. Gotcha. Um, then you let go on it, basically rest back down. Okay. So tonight I'm testing it because obviously it is dark and it's starting to get really cold to see if, you know, I think Papa Rhino is going to be content sitting on this for, you know. It's pretty comfy. It is actually super comfy. Yeah. Can you imagine just having acres of like perfect grass? I could imagine it. I don't know that it'll ever happen. <laughs> James is eventually going to have a super sweet grass field right there that's it's actually growing in right now. That's why he, one of the main reasons he bought this. Cab. 
let alone the dust. Granted, everything's been pretty wet, so I don't think we're gonna have too big of a dust issue. So again, I wanna make sure Papa Rhino's gonna be comfortable if he's sitting here in this field brush mowing all day. Here goes nothing, wish me some luck. <laughs> Let us engage the mower. We're set at uh, four inches. I think that's plenty for this field. All right, mower's engaged. this type of weed is um, it doesn't really it just kind of pushes it down doesn't really eat it so I know the lighting's gonna suck right now GoPros hate low light but seems like everything but these boogers get minced up here pretty good these it takes like a good couple of passes over it to get them to uh, actually cut. I'm assuming they lay down and then the uh, mower ends up going over top of it and it doesn't actually get a chance to cut it. The problem is these are our biggest nemesis is this is this is this nemesis is I nemesis I out here. Um, you can see that whole field behind me is all of whatever the heck kind of weed or grass or whatever that is. You know the mower is doing great so far. I don't know if we want to have Papa Rhino having to do like three or four passes on the massive acreage here that he's gonna have to be mowing. So we gotta see, we do still have time, and the reason I wanted to do this test tonight was I have time to rent a brush cutter for James' skid steer and let Papa Rhino be in an enclosed cab and comfortable and not have to worry about the elements. However, if we do go that route, this thing's rad for all the like around the fences and stuff. I think this thing will be perfect for that. I'm gonna send a video to Papa Rhino of this thing and see you know, if he wants to do it. I don't know, we'll see. I definitely definitely should have bundled up more for this ride. Now obviously the lawnmower is only going to be able to get to so many places and there's going to be a, a good amount of handwork here. So I've got like double the amount of yard equipment here in terms of weed whackers, lawnmowers, blowers and all that because the previous owner, um, he left me all of his stuff. And we've been using this old steel uh, weed whacker here and this thing's been working great. But I went to fire her up yesterday and she was just fighting me and did not want to start. And the other weed whacker I have, and don't laugh at me, I bought this when I got my first house, didn't have a lot of money, and this is the cheaper weed whacker. I quickly learned a lesson though. I've got the old Echo here, and this is like the most homeowner model ever. Never buy a curved shaft weed whacker if you can. They're, they're no bueno, they're no bueno. I mean, that thing works, but it's not comfortable with the curved shaft. Then, uh, you know, let all the curved shaft jokes ensue now. And then obviously I've got my Milwaukee Fuel, which that's great for the grass section of the yard here, and I actually do like that thing. That's not enough to brush cut any type of field or anything like that, so we leave that in here for the grass. Now, uh, it was a little short notice yesterday that I realized this weed whacker didn't work and we should probably pick up another one, so we found the only one that we could find in town on short notice after working at the restaurant, so it's not quite the right model, but it should work. So we got us here the Echo SRM 2620, and this is, trust me, on the smaller side of weed eaters out here, but I went ahead and picked up the uh, brush blade attachment on there. We're gonna see how that does today. What we're doing is like not thick woody brush, but a lot of it is this like, I don't know, James called this milkweed. Of course the animals wanna eat it now that we're working on it. But this stuff when it gets wet, like it is not fun to knock down. And you can see, uh, I mean you could go by and pull it all by hand, but that ain't no fun. So we're gonna try and knock it down here. We're gonna see how this thing works. Let's get this bad boy fired up. Let's see how the blade works. If that blade don't work well, we'll switch it back over to string. But you gonna start it for me? Are you gonna start it for me? No, you're just gonna eat my sweatshirt. Oh, and of course we all know Papa Rano's much better at getting things started than I am. So he already got the old one started. But let's get the new one, because I don't like fighting with old stuff. Alrighty, she is running. Now hopefully you guys can see just how dense and wet and thick this crap is all along the driveway fence line here. And this is like 
some of the more important stuff that we need to get down by hand. 600 plus feet, so 1200 if you do both sides of the driveway here, all to do by hand. That blade's great, but even in this stuff, it's this stuff's so thick and it's really moist right now, which is honestly, it's the time you want to do it, but it's the hardest time to knock all this stuff down. It'd be better when everything was dried out, but then you run the risk of starting a fire, and we don't want that. Now, this is my first time ever running a blade on a weed whacker, and I gotta say, I'm definitely sold. I'm not a giant mess of splattered crap all over me. And, you know, granted it's not perfectly clean, but in a matter of like four or five minutes, we got, I don't know, a fifth of this side of the driveway done. Obviously we still gotta do the other side of the fence. But we gotta get Papa Rhino started on James's zero turn, so we gotta head over to James's house right now and pick it up and you know, set him loose on all the acreage and see what happens. <laughs> Secret, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta shake it. Uh oh. I think it is inside the gas tank has those little floats. I mean, uh, filters on them. I think it's all clogged up and gummed yeah, up. Yeah, that's why when I'm shaking it, it's. And we got Gunner out here supervising all the hard work going on. What's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? I'll say hi to everybody on YouTube. They've missed you. They haven't seen you in a while. I feel like we should do a, an animal check-in for you guys. Everybody always asks about all the animals. Uh, I don't know where Willie is. Willie was just here two seconds ago, but I don't think he's a big fan of the weed whacker. We'll go say hi to Big Walt, who's out here in the field, and try to not get bit by a snake today. Big Walt, buddy, we need you to eat more. You gotta eat faster. You gotta eat more. You're a big cow. Eat all of this. Morning, Big Walt. How are you, buddy? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see your nose is still nice and wet. I don't know if that means anything like a dog. Does that mean you're healthy? Oh, we give you some neck scratches. There you go. Yep, that's your spot right there, huh? That's your spot right there. Oof, your burp smell great. Just past Big Walt, we got all the donkeys right there next to the little tree house jungle gym thing. Good morning, donkeys. Good morning. It's good to see you. Let's say hi to camera. We got the baby donkey there. Then we get the old big old jealous donkey coming over. Good morning. Good morning. Dang, y'all been bushwhacking in some wet stuff. Look how wet your hooves are there. Looks like y'all got some tire shine going on there. We don't we don't use tire shine in this family, all right? You don't get dirt and stuff that sticks to it. And then we say hi to everybody's favorite. Hi, big guy. Yeah, everybody's missed you too on a channel. See, Willie's like a Sour Patch Kid. He'll destroy your house, but then he'll come cuddle with you. And, uh, you know, you can't really get that mad at the guy. Okay, so jumping to the Bronco here, we're gonna head over to James's and grab his zero turn. Alrighty, there's your chariot. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's rip this thing up. Yeah, well, oh, no, we're not gonna break this one. No. We're gonna kill some snakes? Yeah, we're gonna cut heads off. It's even got a cup holder for the Red Bull. Right on. Even though I wouldn't want to drink it after all this flies in it. And then you just barely gotta pull one to make it turn. You might want to adjust those back once you get, uh, yeah, you'll see. You can speed it up. Yep, forward. Oh, don't hit the Bronco. That lever forward, yep. All right, y'all, here's the hope, and I don't have to buy a zero turn today. So I thought I was gonna be on brush cutting mode with these guys, but on one of the main roads next to us, they're doing a bunch of asphalt repaving. So they're grinding up all the asphalt and then throwing down a, a new top layer. I, you know, I don't know the exact terminology for the asphalt world, but cool thing is they have a bunch of asphalt millings, which that is all the old ground up asphalt that they take off. And depending on where you're at, like out here, it's expensive for the companies to truck it out somewhere to go recycle it. So instead what they do is they offer it to neighbors for relatively cheap. Well, James arranged for them to bring a ton of it out here to be able to do our dirt road with all the asphalt millings. Now this is supposed to happen next week, but uh, I just saw James on my way in here and he's like, oh, they're bringing it now, we gotta go. So I'm gonna jump in the wheel loader right now, which is apparently hooked up to the skid steer. I don't know if James's video has gone out yet about what happened to that thing, but you know, make sure you guys go check out James's channel, Get Muddy. Apparently we're gonna be doing some asphalt milling spreading today. I love living out here, guys. There's just so many like, you don't know what's gonna happen and all of a sudden like your day completely changes, but there's always cool stuff to do. So let's unhook this chain here. Didn't really allow a lot of clearance there. There we go. We'll get this big old beast fired up. Oh, oh, other way, other way. There we go. Oh, you guys have no idea how much I love this big old thing. So I'm actually in the market for a farm tractor. And the reason being is, again, I don't like being in a skid steer. I don't like being all hunkered down. Albeit they're extremely versatile, but for like, 
long passes of grading the road, uh, brush cutting the field. I like being in something like this. You're up high, you got windows all around, it's bright, you got great visibility. Granted, you can see the bucket better on a skid steer, but I would love a Kubota M4 series tractor. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe I shouldn't get that. If you guys have any experience with them, let me know, but I think the M4 series deluxe cab tractor is like, it might be in my wheelhouse here. Now I'm gonna apologize to any of you guys that don't enjoy videos where we're running equipment, but it's me living out my childhood dream, so I'm still gonna do it, I'm still gonna film it. So we gotta head out right now, James just called me, we gotta make some room on the side of the road, like make a couple little turnaround spots, that way the trucks aren't having to run all the way down to the end of our dirt road, turn around and come back. Alrighty y'all, so this looks like a good place right here to build a little turnaround. Man, I love the power of this wheel loader. Just makes things so easy. Alrighty, y'all, looks like we got our first truck pulling up, our first customer to our little uh, turnaround here. I didn't have time to grab my GoPro, man. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of stuff, so. That sounds good to me, let's do it. All right, let's see, I tried to make that opening pretty wide for them, but figured they'd pull in forwards back up this way, but he wants to back in, but I think we're gonna do all right here. Oh, jeez, we already got the second truck. All right, guys, this is about to get crazy. Also, now that I'm seeing it, we might need to make this a little bit wider for these guys. These trucks are long. But I'm definitely gonna have to knock these piles down as they're coming. Oh, jeez, and we got truck number three coming. Let me knock these piles out of the way here. Things are getting crazy, guys. Things are getting crazy. Can you get through there or you want me to open up more? Uh, I can't get past them, so they're gonna have to come this way. Got a nice Peterbilt here in James's silver color. Oh, okay, well, I guess this guy's just dumping here. He's gonna be in for a rude awakening when he finds out he can't go anywhere. <laughs> I don't know where this guy plans on going. He just dumped. I thought he was gonna do what this guy's doing. Turn around first, dump on your way out. And then we got a neighbor that's stuck right there in their Prius. So I'm just gonna do my best here to uh, keep pushing piles around. That way people can keep getting by and trucks can keep getting by uh, until James comes out here. I know once that grader's out here, he's just gonna push mountains of stuff. Um, granted, the wheel loader can too, but James can literally do one pass and cover the entire width of the road with that grader. But let's go knock this pile down over here so the neighbor and the Prius can get by. All right, hey, this guy did a pretty good job keeping everything on one side of the road there. Now, I legitimately live in the middle of nowhere, but we still have a decent amount of traffic that comes down our road, so we gotta contend with that today. All right, James has made it out here in the old grader, and you can see this thing just pushes piles like it's nothing. All right, y'all, so we got our, our first three trucks, which came quick right after another, and then James was saying with a probably round trip in those three. We've been waiting here for probably a solid 30 minutes or more, waiting for uh, the trucks to come back, and James just called them, and they're like, oh, dude, it's a 40-minute round trip. Uh, you know, we got we to gotta see if this is worth it for us, which, by the way, they're getting paid to get rid of it, right? Yep. Yep. Plus, they're charging us for it, and there's no way in heck it's... 40 minutes. Our dreams of getting <laughs> all these loads might be crushed right now if these drivers don't speed it up and their boss uh, says it's taking too long because basically the grinders are going, it shoots all the grindings in the back of the truck, then the trucks come here and dump it. Well, if you don't have enough trucks to keep that circle going and the grinders have to stop, they're not happy. Those things are like, I think they're six or $700 an hour. Oh, they're Okay guys, so we're gonna call an audible right now because again, we're fighting these drivers that aren't the quickest drivers in the world. Instead of starting like midway on the road here, we're gonna go all the way to the paved portion of the road where it switches to dirt. And we're just gonna have them start dumping there and hopefully we get the turnaround times quicker. We're not in control of that. Okay, so we made it out to the paved portion. Sounds like our trucks are coming back here. 
So we're gonna spin them around and we're just gonna start dumping them right where the pave goes to the dirt right there and uh, hopefully speed some things up. You can see just how heavy they're loaded. I mean, his tires are uh, pretty smooshed down there. So we'll get him backed in. Sorry, I'm eating a sandwich right now. We're gonna do our best here to speed up these turnaround times. Will it work? I don't know. This might be the last three trucks that we get if we even get the three back. Okay. Right there. You mind if I pull forward a little bit? Wherever you think, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that and I don't want to fucking flip over. I'm with you. Yeah, wherever you're comfortable. We got the wheel loader, we can push it. So we're gonna get him to a flatter spot here, let him dump it and then we'll just push it with the wheel loader. Thank God we have James's wheel loader. That is a huge help for today. Alrighty, there we go. So for the record, we're unloading here in about three minutes or so before they're back on the road heading back. James doing some off-roading right now. That thing is crawling through the ditch. Can we just listen to the sweet sound of that old diesel running? Back when diesels sounded like diesels, Oh, it sounds so good. Now, if I were a betting man, being that we only got one truck back, I'd be willing to bet they sent one truck and they're gonna time him instead of committing another three to us. Now, it's probably gonna be hard to see on camera, but that hill right up there, right at the top of that hill is where they're actually doing their asphalt grinding. I just GPSed it, it is 1.5 miles away. Now, granted, you know, it's a hill and you gotta go kind of slow in a overloaded truck, but there's just no way, no way they're getting 40 minute turnaround times when we have them unloaded in less than three minutes. But something tells me we're not getting any more trucks today for whatever reason. Apparently there's a guy at the top of that hill that he wanted a hundred loads, but James was saying there's no way he can keep up with them. Um, he's just got a little John Deere, like little tiny John Deere tractor. And I'm assuming he's only got so much room and he just can't keep up. They're dumping too quickly because they're right there, which would be our dream to get them quickly because we got the equipment to push it and move it, but they don't seem to want to drive over here. Story of my life with this road. We've tried so many times to be able to get this road nice uh, without spending a million dollars to actually pave the whole thing. I have not seen a truck come down the hill. Now they're done. I'm gonna leave them a bad Yelp review. I know, come on ATP. Oh, we just name dropped. Oh, I will name drop. I'm upset. Yeah, we're upset. I wanted 75 loads today. I'd have took 300. I don't know that I can afford 300. We'd have figured out a way to afford 300. <laughs> they finance with A-Firm. <laughs> been, uh, it's been 30 minutes. He's definitely been up there for 15 or 20 of those 30. Let's see how this phone call goes right now. Okay, here we go. They're going to tell me no. Thank you. Okay. Um... Okay, do you know what time that'll be more or less? Sounds kind of promising. Okay. Kind of good news. Uh, that good didn't news. sound horrible. No, he said that's a little too far, but um, he says we got a couple spots like super close by, but uh, he says on our last trips, he says I'm gonna send six more loads out your way. Still be better than yeah, zero. You know, 30 days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'd be done. Well, I think it's like a four day long project, so. Huh. We might get like two, 300 feet of the road. It's too bad we don't have a couple dump trucks down here. We just jump in line. I'll bet they'd let me. <laughs> All right, guys, we got good news. We got a couple trucks coming here. So what do you say? We're going to get six more today? I think so. All right, so Hopefully. everything they grind up there, they then have to put back the same day. Cause you can't, you know, it's a two lane road. You can't just leave that uh, opened up like that. So we are at 11.30. So this is the last six trucks is what they said we're going to get, which means, you know, about till one o'clock or so. So they're going to be grinding and then they're going to spend the rest of the day putting all the asphalt back. How do we convince them just to like bring the asphalt trucks here? With the fresh asphalt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's work on that. Oh, that's easy. You just whip out your checkbook. Yeah. I think we capped it out to pave this road about a million dollars. Yeah, give or take. We cut it down to like 700 if we do all the work. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have 700 grand left. Around. We're working on it, guys. We're working on it. If anybody wants to buy feet pictures. <laughs> Just let us know. He's only gonna come back to about here. All right, so we're gonna have James give a little explanation here of the uh, asphalt millings. 
All right, so there's big chunks like this because the grinder literally goes so fast. It's like walking pace that it fills these trucks up. It's like maybe a minute or two and they're full. So it does rip out big chunks, but because California is so awesome and we love our dust here, actually that's like totally <laughs> not true. These grinders have huge water tanks that are like pumping a ton of water into this material. So like right now is like the perfect time to put it down because it's like perfectly moist. So you guys can get stuff like this, it's perfect. So in the essence of saving time here, James is jumping in the wheel loader and we're just gonna kind of spread stuff out with the wheel loader first. It's not enough material, I feel like, for the grader to push and fill in all the humps as much as we would like, um, especially at the rate that we've been getting material here. So I'm gonna do this for the time being and then maybe go run and grab the skip loader and run the Gannon on the back to fill in any little bits of humps because if you guys have ever tried to grade with a big wheel loader like that, it's not that easy. I mean, I'm sure James is great at it, but uh, that's why I'm letting him do it. I don't have a ton of experience trying to uh, grade with that setup. Oh, it looks like somebody's propane delivery just showed up right when we got two truckloads in the way of them. Squeezing the old propane truck by there. You guys know Hank Hill loves a good bobtail propane truck. All right, here's our uh, third truck here. So we did end up getting all three trucks back. This guy is the one that's running the automatic. He's the one whose uh, brakes get cooked coming down that hill there. So we'll get him backed up. James jumped on the grader, so now that he got everything spread, he's gonna see if uh, now the grader will look, work a little bit better. We might make it pretty far. It's pretty thick right there. I mean, we're like, we could spread that far. Uh, I feel like this whole area needs to stay fit. This is what gets torn up the most during the rain. Okay, so I just got done knocking down those piles for James. So he's in the grader right there. That was three of our, uh, we're guessing, six trucks we're gonna get today. Not quite the 75 we had hoped for, that's for sure. Oh yeah, we're starting to look good now, guys. Now one of the bad things about James' grader is the front wheel drive doesn't work. So as you can see, that thing is six wheel drive. And albeit he's not pushing a ton here, but there's still times where it'll start to dig in and the rear four wheels will spin, which essentially just creates a hole. So I know he's hoping to get that front wheel drive fixed uh, soon here to make this a lot easier, but you can see like right here, his tire started to spin and it dug up that now that hole that he now needs to come back and fill. So again, asphalt millings, it's all the asphalt grinding that they take up. But a lot of people use it as a pretty cheap alternative to paving a road. It's not obviously exactly pavement. Technically it is asphalt, but it's not fresh asphalt laid down. I don't know if they call it wet, but laid down wet, rolled, and then left to harden. But this stuff would normally go back to get recycled and return back into asphalt, or you do what we're doing here. You use it to lay it down on a road. Granted, I don't think it's gonna pack quite as hard as if you were actually paving a road standard way. That's why they do it the way they do it. But the good news is if this starts to loosen up, this doesn't get dusty like all the dirt and sand and everything out here does. So even if this loosens up a little bit, I think uh, the dust control is still pretty good on it. Well guys, story of our lives, our six trucks turned into three. So we made a spot right here, um, quick easy access for them to come in. Um, today's Friday, so it'll be the weekend. So obviously they're not gonna be trucking anytime in the next couple of days. But when they do, we're just gonna stockpile it all here. That way we don't have to physically be here and constantly moving stuff out of the way for everybody that drives down the road. But as far as we got, we cannot win with this road. Every time we think we're like, we got a golden opportunity to make this road super, super rad. Um, you can see the way things kind of go here. So good news is though, we get to go check back up on Papa Rano, see how he's doing running James's uh, zero turn and doing some brush cutting. So far everything's looking good. We've got Gustavo, you guys haven't met Gustavo yet. He's in the golf cart right now. He's been running up and down the driveway with the, uh, the weed whacker. So you can see that's where I did my test pass the other night. And then Papa Rano looks like he's working on about a, I don't know, about a quarter acre section over here. Maybe a little bit bigger, maybe it's a half acre. There's a spot he's working in right there. Look at that. Oh, that looks so good. Let's go check in with him.
described in this thing like he's on a go-kart track. He built himself an oval. Is that your first tank of gas? Second. Second tank of gas? How do you like it? No. <laughs> Not for here. Not for cutting a, a lawn. Great. Right, smooth. I notice you're using like an eighth of the deck. Does it cut That's better that you way? can. Uh oh. That wet stuff's too much? It's thick in there. Alright guys, so this is how long our, our blade lasted here. <laughs> Things were going great, but we got a smooth blade now. Oh, hell no. I just climbed in the single cab here to go fill up uh, the lawnmower and I noticed this super big spider web. Rhino and spiders do not get along. That looks like a brown widow web, which are especially not my friends here. Oh yeah, look at that. No bueno, no bueno. Get out of there. Get out of there. Now, luckily for me, I've got my uh, Flog Transfer Tank. If you guys haven't seen the Transfer Tank videos, go check them out. Or go to flogindustries.com. Check out their website, but the absolute best transfer tank in my opinion. Number one, low profile, low profile pump. Sits below your bed if you want to run a fifth wheel or a gooseneck. You don't got to worry about filler necks and all that standing up. Plus, it carries gas and diesel. Two pumps, two setups, which is perfect for times like this. I'm not sitting here with five gallon gas cans trying to fill up a gas mower. We got that on board as well as diesel. All right, y'all, I got motivated. Seeing all this beautifulness out there, out past the house grass. We're gonna give the backyard grass a cut here. So stuff grows like crazy, but then it was super embedded with thatch. So a couple weeks ago, I actually ran a dethatcher through here, pulled up most of the thatch. There's still a little bit of like the old dead stuff you'll see down in there. I didn't want to traumatize the grass too much. I've given the grass a couple weeks here to heal before I come through and I'm actually gonna aerate the grass as well. But for right now, let's get our mow on. Normally I uh, like to go around and weed whack first, but I totally forgot. Gustavo has the golf cart, which has all of my weed whacker string in it. Also, I use the trailer to throw all of the grass clippings into the trailer and then I go dump them. And well, we also can't do anything about that when Gustavo has the golf cart trailer. So we got this half done. We still gotta do the other half of the yard there, but uh, we're gonna wait till Gustavo's done with the, uh, the golf cart. We happen to get a lot of wind out here. So a lot of these big old branches have fallen and I'm gonna grab these, get them out of the way for Papa Rhino to then come through with the mower. Don't mind my weird mount. Uh, you can see it on the camera there, but I am currently using my phone because my GoPro decided it did not want to work anymore today. <laughs> Papa Rhino's still going around, man. As much as uh, he's complained about that mower, he is, he's sticking it out. He's a trooper, definitely. I said we're gonna get all kinds of equipment in this video and well, got one that definitely hasn't been on my channel yet from James's house, the skip loader. So James is going out now to go fine grade the road using the Gannon on the back there of the skip loader. I'd love to have me a setup like that. Well, I kind of want to buy a farm tractor and put a big Gannon on the back. I can groom all the roads all the way around the property. Um, the fire roads going up down the side of the property, something like that. Now, granted, again, I know everybody's going to say you need a skid steer, you need a skid steer, you need a skid steer. Yeah, I mean, I need a skid steer. I need a farm tractor. I need all kinds of stuff. And I'm trying to like make my next purchase because my next purchase is going to be a much bigger purchase than the actual mini X there. So I'm trying to make sure my next one can hold me over for a while until I'm thinking I need another piece of equipment and another piece of equipment. And I'm sure James will attest to it because he owns like 20 pieces of equipment. You're never going to have every piece that you want or every piece that you need. You got to make one work for a bunch of stuff. So I'm thinking farm tractor is pretty versatile. Okay guys, Papa Rhino's getting a little wild with it now on this hillside over here leading up to the animal stalls. We don't want him to roll this thing. He's rolled an excavator before. <laughs> be stuck we might be stuck had to get it stuck it's the end of the day you're stuck on your bumper 
get off it, I bet we can pick it up and push it over. You're getting wild with this thing in the ditch. What do you think? You buying a zero turn? If I do, it's going to be a bigger one than that one. So sad news of the day, guys, is, uh, well, my GoPro died. Dropped it. I've dropped it a million times. Apparently, this was the million and one, million and one, million and first time. And, well, she broke. So we've been filming the rest of the video on my phone, which sucks. I hate doing it, but whatever. Now we got to get James's mower here all cleaned up, blow it off. I'm going to end up washing it, refueling it before we bring it back. All right, so we gave her a quick rinse off here. She is nice and clean. I don't ever like to give things back dirtier than I found them. In fact, I like to give things back cleaner than I found them. So we're gonna jump back in the Bronco, follow Pablo Ryan over to James's house. Look at just how good that side of the field looks like. I mean, the animals are already stoked. You can see how much we had to cut down there. You can see how tall Willie is in that tall grass out there. So we're just following the pace car here in front of us. This, this might make you miss the zero turn if you're running this. Oh, you said you wanted this. <laughs> ah. Oh, yeah. All right, so this might be the upgrade to uh, the zero turn for Papa Rhino. Now, if you guys remember previously, Papa Rhino mowed the field. He borrowed James's brush cutter. We were running it on the 272 back then. I'm not sure. Now, that thing was bought for his 259 and it's rated at a much lower hydraulic flow rate than the 299 puts out so he doesn't want to run it on his 299 so he ended up selling it but it sounds like james is probably gonna end up buying another brush cutter There's clutches and <laughs> yep. you up for that? There's a lot going on at once there. Ah, really. oh, no promises. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, shit, the bearings are good. Look at it. That has to be on. Like option A or B better. I like A. What is what they had when you were younger? Yeah, this was state yeah. of the art. I want to say it's a 72. Well, as you can see behind me, guys, the sun is setting for a second time in this video. And, uh, well, we got a decent amount done today. I mean, we still got tons and tons and tons of acreage. Shout out to Papa Rhino for sitting on that thing all day long. I know I would not want to be uh, out in an open cab out there with all the pollen and crap in the air. I would be dying. That is for sure. Huge thank you to James for letting me borrow not only the Zero Turn, but always trust me with his equipment. I mean, you guys saw, like, had no problem letting me jump on the wheel loader today. I mean, that thing, is that's a quarter million dollar piece of equipment that uh, he trusts me with. And I am honored and grateful that he does because, uh, you know, that type of stuff always makes life easier out here. That's for sure. And uh, I got some great neighbors. So with that, we're going to wrap up as always. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you're not missing out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, a okay, thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workforapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you got to be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. I'm out. Damn. Uh-huh.